you lift people up. You just lifted me up. You gave me a lot of ideas. You told me, hey, man, I'm going to hang out with you outside of this. When you do that all the time and you give back to people and you literally look out for their best interest, I have a dream manager that works for me. Her job is to help every single person peel back the onion and figure out your dreams. And I say, do you want to take your dad on a fishing trip? Do you want to take your grandma to Spain? And that way, when I'm talking to you, Brad, I say, Brad, listen, bro, you wanted me to hold you accountable because, man, I know what your dreams are. I'm looking at them right here. We're going to do this together. And those hard conversations become easier. And Elevate is all about letting everybody win. What it is, Brad Lee back again with another episode of Dropping Bombs. Today in the studio, folks, I got a real treat for you. Tommy Mello is in the house. What's up, Mello? What's up, Brad? Dude, your parents would have been freaking rock stars if they would have named you Marsh. Yeah, well, my aunt's name is Marsha. She married into it. Is her name Marsha? Marsha Mello, yeah. Yeah, but she's an, <laughs> aunt, she, she's an aunt, but she married into it. So she had... <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm sure you've heard that before. I am. Now, most people be thinking, dude, Brad's already making fun of his name in the first five seconds. Well, that's because I know he's not going to feel bad because he's built a, a $220 million revenue company. Yeah, Garage Doors. A1 Garage. A1 Garage Quarter service. bill. Well, here's the deal. We're going to talk about that, though. You know the Garage Door is the smile of your home. We trademark that. It's 40% of your curb appeal. It's the number one ROI on the home, more than your kitchens or bathrooms. I would say I would say I agree with the smile, except for I would go a step further. What would you say? It's the teeth. The teeth. Yeah, because you can have a great smile and fucked up teeth, and guess what, dude? Your smile don't mean shit. It's true. So your garage on your house, it's your teeth. Because <laughs> <laughs> if those look like shit, the whole house looks like shit. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you know I love garage doors. I've been doing this sixteen years. And um, over the last decade, how old are you? I'm turning forty on Friday. So, Friday so when you were twenty-four, yeah, what were you doing before you did garage doors? It's interesting. I've done a lot of stuff, man. I uh, I was a busboy, a server, a bartender at twenty-four. Yeah, I, I ended up getting my master's degree. But the thing that I did is kind of funny because you, you're familiar with arbitrage. It's my favorite word in the world. Well, let's break that down because there's a lot of people that have heard it, but they don't know what it means. So I'm going to explain this in really, really easy terms because I'll tell you a story about what I used to do from 20 to 25. One day I was in Arizona Republic, which is the newspaper in Arizona. Yeah. And I, I watched this really awesome commercial for the Bowflex. And I'm like, dude, I want one of those bow flexes, but I'm, I'm busting tables and serving. I don't have 2,500, I'm not gonna finance it. So I go in Arizona Republic, I find one, I call the guy up, I bought the first paper, called him up, he goes, dude, you're the 10th person that's called already. The guy already came and picked it up, he lived right down the street. So at that point, Craigslist just came out. So me and my buddies are talking, and I go onto Craigslist, I find six bow flexes for 600 bucks. I go buy all of them. And then I put an ad in Arizona Republic for 1500. So I bought over 200 Bowflexes, bought them for five to 600 bucks, sold them for 15. Sometimes I negotiate, it depends on the model. And uh, that's what arbitrage is. So you were, you were flipping bow flexes. Flipping bow flexes. I started doing total gyms. Anybody that was paying for promotions on TV, like Chuck Norris, for me to sell something, I was like, I'm in. And uh, in the 1860s in San Francisco, there was the uh, the gold rush. So what there used to be clipper ships. So they'd start out in New York and they'd go all the way around to San Francisco. And they could buy like a, a tool or a pair of shoes. That's for a like, long ass way, by the way. In three days, it took a clipper ship. But they'd, they'd literally From 5X. New York to San Francisco? It took three days. I know, but you're, you're going like this. It's actually like this. They're going all the, well, they're going all the way around. Yeah, yeah all the so, way around the so, United States. So the deal is, though, they could get there in three days, and it was like four days back, but they 5 x their money because they bought it in one area and sold it in another. So and that's home, arbitrage? Arbitrage. So home service is, I'm a platform company. We There's no one else like us except for a couple franchises, and those don't count because they're not singly owned. Franchise order doesn't own them. So... You, you partner with PE, and we go out and buy companies at... Basically, it's a multiple of profit. I don't want to get fancy with EBITDA and you know confuse people, but it's it's a multiple. So let's just say I'm making a million dollars a year. Uh, it's a five million dollar business. I'm bringing in twenty percent bottom line, which is one million dollars. 
you're going to get in the open marketplace today about five million for that company 5x now when i buy that company in the home service space it, well garage doors are less multiple than hvac hvac you'd be paying about 10 to 12 x on that dude i've been thinking about starting hvac company garage door company because of all your guys's stories that are it's just well, crazy. You, you know victor rancor he's a good buddy of mine i mean here's the facts um you know grant cardone's getting it i know your you buddies with him i He's, he's buying them all up, trying to. Yeah, you know, it's not easy. I've done every single job in the business. I've been the payroll, AR. I've been the warehouse guy. I've done everything in the business. I was the technician for eight years. I have been lied to, cheated. Uh, people stole from me. I have, mean, you, have you ever seen that clown that hides from gay people? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen it? No. The client, the clown that hides from gay people. Oh, have you boy. seen it? No. You haven't seen it. Is it hiding from you, bro? I don't know. <laughs> it must be hiding. I'm Keep confused. going. Oh, anyways, yeah. <laughs> I'm confused now, but uh, you that's know. a joke, bro. Okay, that's my that's my newest and best joke. Okay, dude, you ask somebody, have you seen the clown that hides from gay people? And most people are gonna say no. And then you, and then you go, hmm, and then you just carry on, and then and it, usually people will will think, oh, I see what you did there, yeah, dick. You know, it's, it's funny. It's <laughs> okay. just it's just funny. I got it. I had to explain it. Now it's not funny, but it is funny. You can use it if you like. Well, I got some good jokes, but you know, I um, I don't know what I should say on this, but uh, I bought a new house in Paradise Valley. It's a beautiful home, and uh, I went to the neighbor's house, and he goes, dude, you're the guy. You're A1 Garage Doors. I go, yeah. He goes, listen, man, I'm going to welcome you to the neighborhood. He goes, why don't you come over to have a party? And he goes, I go, yeah, listen, I'd love to. He goes, well, well it's only going to be me and you. <laughs> yeah, you know this one. I know them all. I always challenge people. Tell me a joke I don't know. I'll give you 100 bucks. Right now? You want one? Well, you, you can try. Okay. Have you I, I, just, I just learned. Have I just, you heard about the game Midget? Yes. He just came out of the cupboard. <laughs> all right well <laughs> all right <laughs> stupid uh, we should we should not quit our day jobs yeah so folks in case you guys haven't picked up already you know tommy has created a huge profitable company called a1 garage doors and, and you do a bunch of other shit you wrote a book right you 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 teach people things you're a you're a consultant in ways but ultimately a1 garage door that's your claim to fame that's the big company, and that's where I've spent the most time and effort and energy. You can you can try to scoot that over towards you. This, yeah. Well, okay. you want that as close to you as possible. All right. If you lean back, just go like this. What's up? Oh, I got you. You got it. Anyway, if you guys want to follow him at official Tommy Mello, Mello spelled M E L L O, very simple. He has a podcast called Home Service Podcast. Home Service Expert. Home Service Expert Podcast, and he's got a book called Elevate. So Elevate is the new book. the uh, The first book I wrote about five years ago was called Home Service Millionaire. If I picked up that book, what would I be learning? Uh, the Home Service Millionaire really discusses how to build the foundation of a business. You need manual standard operating procedures. You need to be able to track your key performance indicators. You need to understand. Manual sounds so mundane, so vanilla. And But you need systems and standard operating procedures and checklists. And when you're doing it right, the numbers will guide your decisions. So we talk about that. We talk about the financial quick check each week so you know where you're at. It's a compass to see which way you should head. Should I be growing or not? Uh, we talk about how to buy and sell companies in that book. Dude, if I were a person in the home service space, man, I would want to need to get that book, no? Well... The book was not very good until I got 12 co-authors that are way smarter than me. And so I, I got the, the best guy in the world at manuals. I got the best financial person ever. I got people that uh, the top, the CEO at Home Advisor. And this book is called? Home Service Millionaire. Home Service Millionaire. Where's yeah. that being sold? Amazon? That's everywhere. Yeah, Amazon. Or you could just, it, it, you just search for it. I've got a few. What if I'm places. not in the home service business, but, but all this success and and glamour is is telling me that i need to change what i'm doing because what i'm doing is not working and i want to get in the home service business i would say listen this book 
I used to mow lawns. I'm from Detroit. I used to mow lawns and shovel snow. If I had this book when I was a kid, I would have made a lot more money. I would have understood things because what do we do when we first get into business? We say yes to everything and we're always given discounts. We just try. We'll, 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 will you paint my, uh, you know, will you paint the siding on my house? Sure, I'll paint the siding on your house. And you take these stupid ass jobs that don't make any money and you're doing favors for everybody and you're the king of cheap. And I tell everybody, listen, I'll tell you a story. I, uh, I had 50 garage drug companies come in and I was showing them everything we do. And I said, who here's charging 10 grand for this type of door in this opener? And uh, they all looked at each other and they kind of smiled. And then uh, I said, who here's charging eight grand? Nobody. And one guy goes, how do you sleep at night? And I go, well, who here has insurance for every employee? Full medical dental. Who here's giving PTO? Who here's doing a 401 matching? Who here has the state-of-the-art equipment, brand new vehicles, <coughs> branded vans? And I said, how do you sleep at night? Wait a minute. You mean to tell me you give your customers a really good deal because your employees aren't allowed to make good money? They're not allowed to live their dreams? They're not allowed to put their kids in private school, go on vacations, have a retirement when they want to go? They're not allowed to home own, own a house? And so that was one of the biggest reasons I wrote the book Elevate is build a business in which your vendors win, your employees, which are my coworkers win. You've got the homeowner wins big time and our partnerships win and we, we win. In business, we don't have to lose it. We're so used to, I'm a competitive son of a bitch. So I, I always was used to win, lose. Where do, you, where do you live? I live in Paradise Valley, so right up Scottsdale, Arizona. And at 24 years old, were you in Arizona? Yeah, I moved out there when I was 16. And obviously high school, graduate, went to college. Yeah. And then, and then out of college, what are you doing? Bussing tables, waiting tables? So for my undergrad, yeah, I was, I was, I was, <laughs> I was still doing garage doors. I was painting garage doors before I started working on them. Yeah, because what I'm trying to find is, the, is that pivotal moment where you went from a, a, a minimum, well, not minimum wage, but just a laborer to an entrepreneur well my dad owned transmission shops he didn't unfortunately pay the irs so that didn't work out but he did that so when i was growing up and my mom was a real estate agent and so i kind of had that knack in me to just go out and do my own thing and my dad taught me a lot he just didn't have his books in order and i think most companies they don't know their numbers they say they do and i'll tell you there's four main things i look at in any business and i could even look at your software business what is it, what's your average ticket? What is your face-to-face -face conversion rate? And that might be a phone call for you guys. What is your booking rate? And what does it cost you to acquire a customer? You give me those four and you tell me beyond a shadow of a doubt, down to the decimal mark, what those numbers are, I guarantee you we can fix the business. We could double it this year. What are those four things? I'm gonna write those down. Average ticket. Your average ticket. Now, so obviously, if a company's going, well, how do I figure out my average ticket? You figure out how but much. But you, you must include zeros in that average ticket. A lot of people pull out the zeros, the ones they don't close. So so average ticket. So you add up all the calls you went on, and you, you figure out your average ticket. And the next one that really makes a big impact is what's your conversion rate? But you, when, but you wouldn't just do sales? Because how would it sales zero? divided by the job opportunities? Revenue divided by the revenue job opportunities. divided by the opportunities. Yeah, J opportunities, not deals. Not deals. So if you talk to a thousand people to get a hundred deals, and you made a million dollars, you don't do a million into a hundred. Do you do a million into a thousand? Some people don't count the zeros, and I think that that's a mistake. Personally, okay. Number so two, out your average ticket. Number two is your closing rate, and and for us, it's face to face. We're out there in your garage or your HVAC or your carpet or whatever. Closing rate, you. which is simple. How many people do you need to talk to before you get a deal? Yeah, and the deal is, if you're not above sixty percent, you're you're probably that's a big big no no. But well, service it depends, on, depends on what industry, but the home services is sixty percent or better. Well, yeah, but what I would say is. We've got 6,200 call tracking numbers. I got attribution models for every single source I do, and there's not anything I don't do. We own Google. I mean, we dominate Google. But so the, that's face to face, and you could do that over the phone or over a Zoom call. Closing teams. ratio. And then the, the, this is the next one that everybody sucks at. What's their booking rate? 
So when you call me up, my job is to smile and book the damn phone call and have some empathy. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lee. I, what, did you have anything important going on today? And look, we're going to get you taken care of. I'm going to send out one of our best technicians. What are your cross streets? And we're getting all this information. My job's not to sell you shit on the phone. I need a guy out there that's been trained. We trained for eight weeks. So, uh, And then the last one is just what does it cost you to acquire a customer? Now, this is important to break this down per lead source because... A lot of people are like, man, my customers don't spend the money like yours do. I go, well, shit, you're on Craigslist. You're, you're on Craigslist and you're paying Angie's list and you're paying for the crappiest leads ever. And here, here's the biggest thing, Brad. This is the one thing, if anybody takes anything away, is I could outspend every one of my competitors because my KPIs are dialed in, those four things. Whoever can pay more per lead will win. And so... I train, I train, I train. I spend more time marketing to recruit A plus players because one A player will run circles around three B players. So I'm looking for the baddest ass motherfuckers in the world. Mm -hmm. And I will pay them a shit ton because they make performance pay. So get to eat what they kill. And I'm like, listen, you come work for me. I gave away 20 Dude, I'm looking for the same motherfuckers. Come on. Let's get it. But yeah, this is what it's all about, man. I, I get really excited when I meet somebody. I met a guy that I had to have. I mean, this dude was like, like I knew he was going to change the company. And I gave him an offer he couldn't refuse, and now he's working with me. And, and, he's, and he was he doing before? He was the CEO of a manufacturing company. They, they were doing $30 million a year. And I said, hey, listen, no more CEO. You, you got to come work with me. And now he's a CTO. He can handle running the business. He really could. We've got a president. We've got a very good... Here, here's one piece of advice I would give you. If you're smaller, you're looking to get a business, is have a business plan, but build out an org chart of everything you need. And there's sample org charts. I've got sample org charts. And I want you to kind of put your hat on every one. So I'd put Tommy on every one. And I'd start running the business because you got to realize what the business is going to look like. And if I hate, which I do, accounting and living in a pivot table in Excel, that's the first one I'm going to hire for. And I'm going to pay somebody very good for that. And when I figured out performance pay, the only person that's not performance pay right now is a cleaning lady. I'm working on getting her on performance pay. But every single person, I hate saying commission because commission sounds like they're trying to, they're, they're not in the customer's best, you know, best position to help them out. But everybody's on performance pay. And, and if we do really, really well, everybody makes a ton of money. And I get excited when somebody makes 300 grand. I jump for joy. I'm like, yes, that dude killed it. And I think a lot of people go, man, that guy makes more than me. And if your business, if you can't pay yourself six figures and the business is not making at least 15%, I prefer 22, then you're failing. And this is where small business owners get confused. They say, oh, I made 250 grand last year. Okay, what did your business make? I just told you 250 grand. Then it's not worth any money. And then I say, you probably heard this before, but everybody gets together at the casinos and you know meetups and they go, yeah, man, I did 10 million last year. Revenue is for vanity and profit is for sanity. I don't give two shits what your revenue was. What did you bring home? Because that's where the money is. And there's usually a big difference, too. Oh, yeah. It's a huge difference. A lot of times these guys aren't making any money. And, the, the, and I'll tell you what, those that can't make it in the real world, they teach. All these guys I see, whether it be real estate, home service, any industry, crypto, they're a bunch of fakes. They never made it. They need to sell their info products of shit to make money. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Well, some of them, some of them, like you know, let's say GC or Grant Cardone. Oh yeah, you've got some good guys out there. You really do. Yeah, like but, like, I, but like Grant, most people say, you know, about Grant, like he just wants your money. He don't really, hear. dude. At the end of the day, Grant is a consummate salesman. Like, like he he wants to negotiate. He wants to sell you something, no matter what it is. And now he's just selling investments. Like he's like, just give me your money, dog, and I'll give you X percent per month back in return. That's what he's selling. Well, what he's doing, too, in the home service niche, and I don't know a lot. I haven't been to any of his events, but he's basically saying, let us come in, let us fix what's broken, those key performance indicators I was talking about. As we partner, now this is the secret sauce for anybody that so wants to So he's saying, let me come in and fix you and give me a piece. Give me a piece, but here's how we really win. He'd say, Brad, here's what we're going to do. 
I'm gonna make you walk, talk, and act just like this company. Then I'm gonna do it to this company. Then I'm gonna do it to this company. And once you pass 20 million of EBITDA, now the multiple goes up. Now, once you pass 30 million, we might be able to get 18 to 20 X. So I'm gonna give you, you're gonna give me ownership because I'm gonna four X your business. And after I fix the KPIs, I'm probably gonna 10 X it, which I just realized he wrote that book 10 X. But that's the secret sauce to home service because it's kind of, it's called the integration. When we buy a company, now here's a, here's something that I really learned over the last two years, is if I buy a mansion, it takes a long time to flip it, meaning a big company. Now, if I buy all these companies that are small, they need infrastructure, they got a lot of stickers, they got a lot of old invoices, people are calling them, they're so easy to just pull into my company. And I just, I'm gonna 10X this business again in the next four or five years. And because of why I reinvested 47%, you do the math, I mean, that puts me, hopefully, I, I'd like to be at a couple billion, personally. Uh, the way jump, I, ch jump change, bomb squad, jump change. The way I got- Small goals, small goals. You know, that's mindset. That is My mindset. mindset. That's perspective. Well, listen, you write a billion dollars down. Yeah, I wrote a billion dollars of revenue. So follow me here. A billion dollars at 22% is 220 million. 20X is 4.4 billion. But you got a hundred billion dollars, or you just got a billion dollars. How do I do a billion in revenue? Well, if my average check is 500,000, I need 2,000 technicians. To get 2,000 technicians working, I need at least three jobs a day. But I only work five days out, they're only working five days out of the how, week. How so many trucks overlap. do you need? Well, I need 2,000 trucks. So that's that's a good point. I need iPads. I need 2,000 iPads. I need 2,000 trucks. I need 2,000 seats. So I went to Mexico and I figured out how to go to the Dodge dealer. And they went to a company called Utilimaster. Now they'll ship the vans done up complete to any city in North America for free for me because we're going through so much volume. Not to mention I'd appreciate 100% of it last year. 80% of it, if it weighs more than 6,200 pounds, I'd appreciate it all. Have you ever heard you probably of got tax credits? Oh, dear shit. The employer retention credits, you know, all that's so have you ever heard of the Augusta tax rule? No. All right. Check this out. This is cool. shit. this is why I bought a really big house and I'm not gloating. I just I love this house. Um, you're familiar with golf in the 70s. Yeah. Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas. Um, they, they have a tournament in Augusta, Georgia called the Masters. Of course. And these guys would go play for a month to get ready. That was like the most important prestigious. Uh, the Masters is everything in golf. So their families would stay out there. What would happen is in Augusta, all these people would rent out their house for a fortune. You know, they'd have the families all staying there and they didn't pay taxes. Well, the IRS has passed a tax ruling. Well, they got a lot of money in Georgia. I mean, right there at the course, it's prestigious. So they did the lobby lobbying in Washington, D.C., and they passed the Augusta tax rule. I could rent out my house to my company for whatever the nearest resort might be. So if I pay, let's say we go to my house and the nearest resort, it's 800 bucks a night. Then there's the bar tab. Then there's the food tab. And then we paid for extra amenities. I have 40 employees come stay in and out of my house throughout the, the year. I can literally write that all off. So if it's a thousand bucks a night, I have 40 employees coming by and I managed to do two weeks. Uh, 40 employees times 14 is uh, five, it's $560,000 I just wrote off. And these are what's out there. Do you know what, it, do you know what the, uh, when you buy a building, you could do a cost segregation study? That I know. It's freaking badass. I mean, the right, 100% stuff that I'm off in the first year. Yeah. But they're about so to change that. It's to pre well, yeah, they're, you know, we're going to buy it in the world up here. Yeah, well, uh, hopefully in the next election we can we can put it back to intelligent. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't know who you going for in the next one. Is it DeSantis or Trump? Well, if they're running against each other, I'd probably have to go DeSantis. Only because of the divisive nature of trump yeah the twitter if he just didn't do the twitter well not much. only that but like he causes people to go berserk like like <laughs> trump crazy is what i call it yeah like dude they get so against his ass that like if it wasn't him it, they'd probably shut up a little bit and and let desantis do his job but if it's trump dude the whole world's gonna go lose their shit 
Yeah, I think and, you and by the way, point. some of us will lose our shit in a good way. Meaning, meaning, dude, I would love to see Trump just to watch this meltdown. Yeah, but I don't. I don't think that meltdown is healthy for the country or our economy. So I think. I think, and, and not only that, Trump's no freaking. Trump is no uh, you know miracle worker, dude. He 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 he's smart. He's a business guy. He'd do a great job, but I don't think he'd be um, ideal. Ideal because of the the trauma that he that he that he puts the country in. You know, CNN and MSNBC, they just go crazy. They Although I'd love to see him. Who, what about you? I like to see DeSantis. Uh, I think he... De, De he ran in Florida. Great. <laughs> Dude, he just busted Disney in the balls. Oh, I know. They, well, they brought the old CEO back for two years. I watched an interview. Um, it's because they just went woke. I mean, literally, they made, you know, every, you know, fish in the new emo was... Yeah, I don't want to go there right now, but... Um, yeah. Do you, want, do you want this? Do you want this to be heard? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I do. Yeah, we better stop then. Uh, here's an interesting AI, fact. bro. Oh, AI, AI is listening to shit too. Well, and, man, and that's and that's cool what's catching out. all this suppression nonsense. So, like for example, you say the word, you know, whatever. Like when I said a, a gay clown on on, I did it to my buddy. He was on a uh, TikTok live, and dude, again, I, I he had uh, two realtors named Eli and Mike buddies of ours they're gay so when I said that I said have you seen the clown that hides from gay people uh, he said no and I and everyone started laughing and I'm like okay well he must be hiding from you and then and then someone said something and I got booted off the call so I'm like I call him back I'm like dude what the hell just happened it says I'm booted for violating he says well because you said gay oh and so man. I called him back on his phone and he was still on they booted me off and I and I just said it and they just Shut me off. We might need uh, to edit that out. For but, li but listen, here's what's funny. So the, he shut me <laughs> off. So I call him on a cell phone and he and he said, dude, what happened? I said, because he didn't know why I got gone. I said, dude, it said this. He goes, oh, probably because you said gay. I said, what's wrong with gay? I said, don't gay people call themselves gay? Yeah. I think they do. I said, Eli, Mike, because I because they were on the live. I'm like, Eli, Mike, do you are you? you say you're gay correct they're like correct i'm like well so what's wrong with gay and, and i and i said it and tiktok heard me on the phone because he had me on speaker and then tiktok banned his ass for seven days for saying well, gay for the, saying the, gay well it's 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 and by it, the way the gay people call themselves gay like yeah gay, but it's okay not a bad it's word. okay if you're gay to call yourself gay but yeah, it can gay, be derogatory because gay when you're is a not kid, a bad word if you're it's gay, not a bad you're word gay. it's not a bad word it's not a bad word if you're gay and i agree with you that's what i say if you've seen the gay clown or the clown that hides from gay yeah, people, no, people it's go, ridiculous <gasps> like dude listen what why is gay a bad word to the social media it's not it's, it's, it's ridiculous it's, it's well it's not because unless you're gay and the reason why is because if you're not gay they think you're making fun of them yeah <laughs> Well, but they will boot your ass off social media. I got booted off of Facebook for some. My team, my team shit. will edit the the word "gay" out more than likely. It'll just be like, Geek. yeah, Geek. <laughs> you you use it quite a bit. Yeah, I'm um, giving them their their uh, workload. Do you know who Roland Frazier is? Indeed, I do. So he's a buddy of mine. I went on his podcast a couple years ago, and um, he's good at understanding how to buy businesses and 10,000 baby boomers retire each day. 8.3 of those percentage wise uh, own a business. So roughly there's 330,000 businesses that are closing their doors and they don't have anything to do. So there's a lot of opportunities out there. I would say if someone wants to learn, you know, definitely read my books, but just understand some simple things like rich dad, poor dad, and understand the simple things like the richest man in Babylon and compound interest is either going to be your best friend or it's going to kill you. You don't need a Harley today. You know, I think the biggest thing for me, there's two things that I really think have caused me to success, uh, to be successful is consistency. I get 50,000 downloads a month on my podcast because I've been doing it for 17 years. Never missed. A Damn. Week. And, um, and discipline. Listen, I show up. I sacrifice a lot. And I don't think anybody, everybody, they read the book, Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. And they say, I just want to work four weeks. I want that work life balance. I'm like, you got to fucking work. You got to work your ass off if you want what we have. We work 24 7. And here's the deal. 
I love work. I enjoy work. I don't think it's a bad thing. But uh, here's my rule. You got to love Mondays, man. If you start hating Mondays, I tell people that I get to work with, I say, if you start hating Mondays, I'll help you get another job. Because that's my goal. We've got the best coffee makers. It's a lot like here. We've got Big Buck Hunter, Golden Tea. We've got Cruise in the I got world. Golden Tea downstairs. Oh, shit. That's my favorite game. Have you seen my training center downstairs? No, I got to check that out. Yeah, dude. Uh, we think alike in that regard. You, you just want your people to be happy. I want the lighting right. You know, all the walls. we got our mission, vision, core values. And for me, Now, you started this whole company, built it. I started from, from zero, scratch, yeah. From zero. So when you were zero, you said, I'm going to start a garage door company. You did just come up with A1. A1. Was that a steak sauce or something? Happened to fall first in the phone book. So Alpha. That it happened like to fall or, or you wanted it to? Was it strategic? Strategically, I knew A1. The only thing that comes before A1 is 1A. And it wasn't going to be 1A garage doors. But A1 is like still, it's A1 from day one, baby. It's top notch. That's A1. <laughs> A1 from day one. That's right. Dude, it's so good they put it on steaks. That's right. Because <laughs> they don't put an A1 on freaking hamburger, brother. Well, you know what? They put it on that, steaks. That's, that's good if I just don't want to get sued. By A1. I, we should do a oh, joint dude. venture because we're big enough now that I think A1, we, we give a small bottle of steak sauce to every client. You could. I'm a big, I'm big into affiliate marketing. Like. When, I, when I started, when I started a, a, a little training company, I went and bought, I don't remember, eight pallets or something worth of Red Bull type drinks, energy drinks, but you could private label them. So I called them Motive, the word Motive, and then the number eight, Motive eight. And and I put on there one can, one can, motivate, and then and then I'd give them to people when I sold them a deal. I'd give them to people, and I think that's what started Red Bull. No, just joking. <laughs> but seriously, I did give that shit out, dude. What what kind of swag are you giving? You don't give them an A one bottle, do you? Ah, uh, we give them all. They got a bunch of swag. I've got a whole store they can order from. But we give them thirty five hundred dollars of tools, eight weeks of training. And I present to them for literally three hours is my orientation, and I walk in there and I dress up for part of it like a doctor, and I put the stethoscope on and I walk in there and I go, "Listen, have you guys ever been to the doctor? So let me see your hands. Who here's been to the doctor?" And I say, "All right." First thing that happens, you sit in the waiting room. Next thing that happens is you, uh, <clears throat> the lady might probably, she's going to check your weight, your height. She's going to get your blood pressure. Then finally the doctor walks in and he looks in your eyes, your ears, checks your heartbeat. First thing he does is he smiles and he's, he leans back and he smiles at you and he sits there confident as can be looking you dead in the eyes. And he goes, Brad, how often are you exercising? What's your stress and anxiety level? What's going on with your work life? How's the home life? How are the kids? What exactly are you eating? How often are you drinking? Are you smoking? And you're honest with the doctor. And then guess what he does? He says, based on everything you told me, this is the, this is the answer. This is the fix. This is the prescription. Do you ever look at your doctor and go, man, I'm going to get a second bid? No. The doctor gave you exactly, but he had to diagnose the person before the problem. Yeah, but people so, do get second opinions. They do if you're going for like a big, so there's this magic number of $5,000. And we don't say the word, I'll tell you what, we train hardcore on this stuff. We never say the most expensive. We say top of the line. We never say the cheapest. We say the most economical. We never say the contract. We say, can you okay the paperwork? We never call it financing. We say, do you want to see if you qualify for one of our promotions? These things matter. But 96% of what we do is body language. We're doing a disc assessment. We spent four days just analyzing our clients. I look them up on LinkedIn, find out what they do, look them up on Facebook, find out their favorite band, look them up on Zillow, find out when they bought the house for how much. I mean, how much is an average garage door? Uh, for us, 6,300 bucks. And, and how much to literally buy the parts and install? So the costs uh, on, on service, our cost of parts is 11%. But it's dangerous, and that you know, why it's got, dangerous. Well, you got you got two hundred to five hundred pounds of torque on that garage. 
when you're that's what that's what lifts it is those springs the torsion springs so you know this is why handyman don't want to do it and then the cost of a door we, we usually try to tr triple what we pay for it but that's we still got to pay to answer this is what people don't understand i have a warehouse i have a truck that we pay for i have air conditioning i have 27 softwares that we use we have personality profiling you know people don't realize and i could go on and on about the the, the cost but people don't understand it costs somewhere around 60 percent of the yearly salary to lose an employee and marketing and well yeah you, you spent a fortune to re to market to the new employees and that's where i i feel like i win all the time man i'm at a i'm at a restaurant i'll meet a bus boy and i'm like dude you were like on it bro like you like your job because i was a bus boy for a long time man and they'll be like yeah man it's okay you know nights gets a little old and i'll be like listen come here do you mind if i take a selfie with you i mean i do this all the time i take a selfie first they're kind of weird and then i go what's your uh, cell phone and I'll text them. I'll say, listen, I own a company called A1 Garage for a service. I want you to come do a ride along. And listen, not a big deal. Spend three hours. I'll pay you. I think this could be a career for you. I mean, six figures your first year should be possible. I mean, there's a clear path to get there. And, um, and every time they don't respond. Then That's the next crazy. day I send a question mark. And then I said in my calendar, every three days I send a question mark. And then finally, it pops. Same thing if I want a review. You know, uh, I'll ask the client, listen, we, we get reviews online and I'll just keep asking them. And it's persistence. And a lot of people don't have this tenacity that I have. And you have. And the people that are successful, they just got this go for no mentality. That, you, you know, I'm going to win because I'm going to outwork you. And I'm going to try a little harder. And people are like, well, when's enough enough? I asked Gary Vaynerchuk when I was with him about a year ago. I was having dinner. And my, my, I said, Gary, my mom always asks me, when's enough enough? I mean, at what point do you consider? I'm like, well, what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, but he goes, Tommy, it's just getting easier. He goes, now I want to see how far I could take this thing. And I go, man, I want to leave a fucking legacy. I want to be known as the baddest ass motherfucker that ever lived in home service. I want to create something that no one else has done. And that's what it's about for me. The money is just a KPI now. It's great. It's in, it, I Money's good if you use it and don't worship it. But for me, I want to give freedom to a lot of people. And I want to see how far we can take this thing because I'm just getting started. I'm in the fetal stages. So if so, if someone's listening to this, they want to get in the home service business, can can they call you and get a get Yeah, a no, reach out. Listen, I do shop tours. I really think it, I pay it forward all the time. I'm, I'm here to get And you're in Phoenix. I'm in Phoenix, but, you know, I spent a lot of time in Wisconsin. That's where my sister lives. I'm I, from I might Detroit. be moving to PV or Scottsdale. PV, yeah. What about it? I might be moving there. Oh, you might be. I'm looking at a few houses right now, as a matter of fact. Oh, snap. That'd be awesome, I'd dude. Be, I'd, be, I'd be like freaking joining a, a list of great names down there. Yeah, so who do you got down there? You you got Dean Graziosi, Carlos Reyes, you, Andy Elliott. Yeah, frickin', Andy. Frickin', Andy's been hitting me you up. Know, Peter Meyerhoff, guy named Dane Lomax. You know Dane? I don't know everybody, Dane. Everybody seems to know Dane. But, dude, there's a lot of players in, in Scottsdale. The, the only thing I don't like is that they, 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 they did, did not elect Kerry Lake. That was bullshit. Yeah. That was a bunch of crap. Do you know the ballots? We're actually too small to read the yeah, one they, on the Republican they, side. They clearly screwed the, the the chick. And now there's nobody. That, it's like it's like they she got deserted. It's unbelievable. Isn't that crazy? Now I'm now I hear. By the way, she might be running for president one of these days. I would love that. Dude, Carrie you know, Lake's cool. She is cool. I sat there with her for a long time, talk with her. Dude, she's just a real chick. She's a real lady. She knows her stuff, man. She, I mean, yeah, she knows. Uh, well, she's not. She's she's like a mama bear. She always uses that mama bear shit. You ever heard her speech? I've not been in live. She with talks her. about you piss off a mama bear. And, you know, yeah. you're, you're making the mama bears mad with this COVID shit and these masks and shit. But at the end of the day, man, I think they robbed it from her. That's the only thing I didn't like about down there. Other than that, I like it. It's like Vegas without the without the sin. Yeah, I don't like Vegas. I you know it, like Henderson and there's certain areas of Vegas, but. I mean, we're it, we're here. I mean, I've got twenty technicians here, and I think it's a great 
that there's advantages in Nevada. No, I mean, especially if you're building a trust. Sometimes I'm swiping up on social media and I see, you know, get your garage door fixed or get your garage door looked at, like a checkup or something. So, so the deal is for garage doors is, is you got to build a need that doesn't exist. So that has to be an education. So did you know that? 90% of the bugs come through the 16 feet entryway because bugs. On, the, bugs. Oh, yeah. on the other side of your garage is usually your kitchen. So the scorpions, the spiders, the ants, the crickets. The So now I created a want for the bottom rubber to get replaced. Noisy garage door. We're getting into storage and flooring in now. So How much does it cost to replace the rubber at the bottom of the door? I started like, well, I got a special for 129 bucks, including labor. But that's, but that's like a lost leader to get in the door. That's to say, all, I want to get my sticker in there. Oh, yeah. Well, believe it or not, the majority of our door sales come from service calls. Because I'll say, listen, Brad, I got your door working, but I, I look at seven things when I'm walking up to the house. I look, is your door oxidized, the paint? How does your trim look? How does your bottom rubber? Do you have a keypad? Is there black residue down the middle? Because that means it's a gear and sprocket. This A baby or is there a room above the garage? I mean, I'm building a plan. I've got a plan for everything. I've got... Like, I, it's not fair. Like, I, I feel bad for some of my competitors, and I love all the Grouser guys out there. Like, we're friends. But I'm like, we're just playing a different game. I mean, I hired three programmers now building out ChatGPT for the shit. Like, we're, we're, we're building shit that's... It's going to contact every client that we don't close, and it's going to consistently feed a loop to either they book us on Calendly or they tell us to opt out. And these things, it's not... It's just... We're, we're, we're playing with a cannon and they're bringing a BB gun. Where did you learn all this stuff? Well, I, you know, I put myself in situations with some of the biggest HVAC companies in the country. And I spent five years traveling to them and asking questions and being the dumbest guy. And I just, I've, I read a lot of books, man. I probably read two books a week. I'm on more podcasts. I'm speaking at an event tomorrow. I've spoken at seven events so far this year and it's beginning of March. So... I just put myself out there and I ask. There's one thing I'm never afraid to ask. I was never afraid to ask a girl out. She said, no shame on her. I'm gonna ask her again tomorrow. I don't give two shits. And one of my buddies went out and I was like, dude, how does this dude, how does this dude pull so many hotties? And so one night I made it a goal. I'm just gonna watch this dude. I'm gonna watch him the whole night. So I watch him and he's drinking his vodka sodas. And he goes, he walks up to a really pretty girl. And I see him whispering in her ear, and then she doesn't smile. And he spends three minutes with her and says, F it, moves on to the next one. And then the next one's smiling and laughing, and whatever joke he told worked out well. And I just realized this guy doesn't care. He's not afraid to know. He's The people that don't take it personally and their mindset and their person, uh, the, their whole being doesn't get hurt when someone says no. No is just that much closer to yes. I'm just going to keep asking. I'm going to ask in different ways. I always say no means no, except for in the garage door. <laughs> but, but it's a joke. I tell I, it was funny you say that because I just used it the other day as an example where I said no means no when it comes to like the sex thing. Yeah. That's it. And that's not even true either. It's like, <laughs> it, but it's not. I mean, again, I don't know about being politically correct, but there's been times where girls have said no. And then, you know, you talk them into it and then they do. And they do willingly. They're like, oh my God, I drank too much yesterday. No, but they do and they do and they do willingly because you talk them into it. And yeah. there's a million guys going, yeah, I've talked a girl into it. And yeah, you know. That's just normal. Like, it's just the truth. So no means no means if someone says no and they're adamant about no, no one no is. And obviously don't force yourself. That I agree with. But when it comes to sales, but matter of fact, I don't even disagree with no means no because I have daughters. Like, yeah, yeah, let's, let's go with that. No means no. When it comes to sex, when it comes to sales, no means I need more information. Absolutely. No, means, no means I need to trust or like you better. Let me tell you No this, does Brad. not mean no in sales. When you're not giving options in a sales role, you're giving ultimatums. And I don't think people understand that. The average consumer should have six options because, and while I do, I learned this from my buddy Joe Crisara, is I give you six options. And I look you dead in the eyes and I say, what should we do? One of the things I always do. What should we do? What should we do? 
Here's your six options. What should we do? Well, what if what if in my mind the, the, none of those options work for me? Well, there's six options. There's the most economical. The six, and I always say, listen. Doc, well, what, what makes you the telling me that there's only six options? What if there's other options? What well, if, the, what if the, there's the deal other is options? I'm listening to you. You told me, so I always say this: don't sell out of your own pocket. Make sure you're getting the customer what they want. So these are the best six. But options I would imagine you your your number one objection in garage doors is uh, let me get some other bids. Yeah, we get that sometimes. I because I, if I if I wanted a garage door, you don't need to sell me. I want a new garage. My mind's shitty. I want a better looking one, whatever. So I call A1 Garage. Come on over. Your guy shows up. He's all badass. He says, here's your six options. In my mind, I'm thinking, well, in, unless those are correct, my, uh, my options are I'll call another company. And, well, here's and, what and I now say. I'll have six more options. Well, well, they won't give you they won't give you more than one or two. What I would tell them is, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> client. Um, this is what I would say is that I don't sell apples to apples. I just I want sell, to get a bid, bro. I just, yeah, no, I want to give you a bid. Uh, let's find, figure out what you want. So first of I all. I want this, this, and that. The, you tell me it's 15 Gs. Let's just pretend. No, but here's We're what role I'm playing. Doing. Here's what I'm doing. First, I call my virtual product specialist, right? Get them on the phone, find out what's in stock, find out if you qualify for any promotions. And then we build the door on your house. The real life door to so show you it. what it'll look like. And then we give you options. That's like a puppy dog close. Oh, it's so easy because I'm going to get you. Well, dude, everybody wants to see their house all designed like, oh, dude, that looks badass. Especially if I show you the really nice ones. Now, you're telling, me, you're telling me other garage doors don't do this? There's a couple companies that do this, but they don't offer financing the same way we do. So I could, and I've got 20 year financing. Well, they don't offer the promotions you The do. promotions are correct. That's right. See, so, I learned quick. See, I should be already over there kicking it, booty. This is what I think the the audience might appreciate is I um I found a company that had twenty five thousand cycle springs and I was like what cycle shit. springs so each time the door goes up and down is one cycle and you could engineer the springs there's all this stuff it's called inch pound per turn and inside diameter wire length wire size so one day I'm just in bed and I go I'm gonna I'm gonna do eighty thousand cycles. And I mean, these, we call them Max Life, so I trademarked them. And they're taller than me. I mean, they're red, powder-coated springs. And so I say, Brad, listen, you've got a 10,000 cycle spring on here. How often do you think you use your door, Brad? With Between twice, the kids. Twice a day minimum. And you've got a wife and you've got sure. kids. So yeah. let's just say you use it 10 times. I'll just... 360. So a 10-year spring will last about, or a 10,000 cycle spring will last about three years. I could get you through. This will be the last springs you ever buy. How much? And, and it's eight hundred dollars versus the five hundred dollars. Well, let me get a bid. Let me get another bid. Yeah, listen. Well, here's what I'll do. <laughs> here's what I'll do, Brad. I will go wait in my car. Feel free to call wherever you want. Oh no! Right now we're heading out to eat. Well, listen. That's when I try to go back to the house. Are you the guy that's training all these all, all, all your techs? And I've got nine full time trainers. Are those the people that are out there training the the people that are going to the houses doing the deals? Yeah. Are they sales people knocking on doors? So we don't knock. Well, but I mean, well, showing up. If I call yeah, a one, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. That's a sales guy showing up. No tech guy. Well, we wear work boots. We smile. We offer coffee on the way. Hey there, Mr. Bradley. My name's Tommy. Listen, I'm on my way to your house right now. I'm stopping off at 7 Can I get you a coffee? Can I get you a soda? Anything you need for the kids? That's nice. That's reciprocity right there. And then we show up and we always knock. Never ring is, the doorbell. Is this, is this strictly on a... On a um, Service call. Yeah. In other, words, in other words, you're going there because they called you. Yeah, we don't do any door knocking. At least I have a separate division that does that. But for for our purposes, that's just to get stickers out there. But so we show up there, and um, one of the things we say there's I have two rules when you're at the front door. Number one is knock. Strangers ring the doorbell. Friends knock. Number two, if they got a dog, you better be on. You better get down there and start playing with that dog because people love their dog. They love their kids. I say if they have a cat, that's on you. You can make your own decision. But uh, you should have a sales course. You have a sales course. Oh yeah, no. We, we this is what we do for two months for and people that are working for you. But I'm talking about what if I have a company and I, I want you guys to train my team. Yeah, no, we 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 are uh, we're looking at doing that. We we've invited some garage door companies to come in and train just for one week. And their sales numbers double. And I tell them they got happier customers too. At the end of the day, you think they're not charging the right prices. Well, first, I want to look at your marketing campaigns. Are you discount garage doors? 
Because if you're discount garage doors, it's going to be hard to build an affluent marketplace for you. Um, but I love it because, listen, at the end of the day, my clients, they spend they spend a lot of money. Um, have you ever heard of Bottle Blonde? No. It's a bar. So I just bought a property in Sandpoint. Idaho? Yeah. And my neighbor, who I used to work for, and this is why I bought it. It's five acres. Uh, I still got to build, but his name is, is Les. And he's opened up a bottle of blonde here in Vegas. And it's the most profitable bar per square foot west of the Mississippi. Why? Dude, so my buddy runs it, Charlie. And I don't like, so this is the bottle. So he went to Miami and he shows me his bottle of Fiji. And his bottle of Fiji was just, they, they make a smaller bottle. And he goes, I found these in Miami. This is saving us $330,000 a year. And then every chick there is wearing like a thong, but they're like, it kind of looks like a playmate. And dude, my buddies are with me, Bree, my girlfriend. And they would order a Magnum bottle of champagne for 1800 bucks. I'm like, so that's fine. And then all the girls walk over and they got this flute. They shoot it. So everybody, that magnum bottle of champagne was gone in eight minutes. It's called Bottle Blonde? Bottle Blonde. Never heard of it. And, and you know, you got John Taffer as a client, but these guys figured out a way for to drink more alcohol, sell more, make you feel special. They know, they teach them how to flirt. They got to do social media hours. You know, they practice smiling. They do their clothes up right. The lighting's right. The bar science of it is if they're slow, they close down the back bar and move it all forward towards the road. Anyway... Well, I used to work there when it was Axis Radius, and I said to Les, I said, hey, would you let me invest in your new bottle of blonde? It's, it's literally 1.7 year pay, payback. And he goes, dude, I, I don't know, man. I only use it to employees. I go, dude, I, am your, I was your employee. We can make this happen. But I'm pretty excited about Sam Point. He's, he's got, what, what do they call that boat? The, not a master craft. It's the big wood boats. Yeah, made out of yeah, they're yeah. hand made out of wood. Yep, yep. They're called Chris Crafts. So. Chris Crafts. So the the owner of Chris Crafts bought a hundred acres in Sam Point. And he's building a high end. Uh, well, that's private. probably that's probably the new Coeur d'Alene. It is because Coeur d'Alene. I uh, I've heard they it's flipped. about an hour outside of Coeur d'Alene. Not yeah. only that, they flipped Coeur d'Alene. They flipped it. No, it's changed. It's a changed environment. What do you mean? It's changed. Okay. Sand Point's probably the way to go. Okay, I think I know what you mean. What? Well, you, well, let's leave it. Leave it till we get off the air. Okay. So, so, dude, I need to have you back for another episode one of these days. You, you don't, you don't live far from here. We're gonna hang out more, dude. You, you know your shit. And see, the, what's cool about me is I know my shit, and I know when people know what they're talking about, dude. You could get into a lot of things you're not even in. You could be, you could be. You could be a, a, a big impact in this world, whether it's, you know, selling garage doors or not. Sales is sales. And a lot of shit you're talking about applies in cars, furniture. Uh, believe it or not, when you go into the dentist and they try to close you on, you know, getting your grill fixed. Any of that. I was pre-dental. Well, well, dude, I listen, I've, I've literally told people, you know, get your fucking teeth fixed. And they're like, well, what do you mean? I'm like, dude, if you if you get all the PC nonsense out of the way and you just po see a dude with like three missing teeth and they're yellow. Do you think he's successful? Yes or no? No. No. Like if I just went, Hey, how you doing? I went, Ooh, and all of a sudden I got messed up teeth. What do you think in your head instantly? It's, it's, it's bad. You can't even figure out how to brush your own damn teeth. You can't even figure out how to take care of your teeth. Like I say, go to the dentist and fix your teeth. I've had people do it. Dude, they, they, they literally DM me and say, dude, it's changed my life having a nice set of teeth. I just so, can't imagine walking around like like my buddy. I, I had, um, they were like moles. They were like big marks. And it wasn't like, they were just brown, like what, beauty marks or moles, whatever you want to call it. And I was like, just remove them, dude. He's he, he did that. And <laughs> he's like. Common sense, isn't it? Yeah, but but he, he goes, dude, this hot chick walks in. And my buddy's a doctor. His name's Sean. And he goes, dude, this kid. Like every time we just kept looking at her fucking mole on her neck. Like she was the hot, right? But, and he's like, listen, they're having a few beers. It's after hours. And he's like, can I just get my fucking laser and remove that mole? He's like, I. I what did he say? She said yes. 
She let him do it. And I'm telling you, she's probably 10 times hotter for it. I see this shit and I'm like, listen, I, I feel bad. But I, I mean, it's, it's, it's materialistic. But look, whatever you could do to improve yourself, you should do. I'm reading this book right now. And I, won't, I know you want to get going here. This book that I'm reading, I don't remember where I found it. Um, my buddy Joe Polish, I think, told me about it. Do you know Joe Polish? Sure. So, the book is called Lifespan, Why We Age and Why We Don't Have to. Who and, wrote it? Uh, the author is, and I'm about three quarters of the way through now, and the author's name is David Sinclair, PhD. And he says... Number one, you got to get started at a decent age. You, you know, you, you got to focus intermittent fasting and not getting full is the most two important things. And then I'm looking to get on, you know, NAD. I, I'm not on that yet, but uh, and then there's T replacement. But he said the way you eat and just you need to exert yourself three times a week. To where least. it's hard to talk because, you know, you're, you're winded. Yeah. If you could do that three times a week, your body goes into a different mode. And obviously, warm therapy and cold therapy, you had those things. You're doing those all are the those? Three most, what's that? You're doing all those? I do the warm one. I'm still, like, at this new house. We just moved in four days ago. And that's why B didn't come. Um, I'm getting the cold plunge. And I'm like, like, I, I try to take cold showers. <laughs> I, no, go I'm not David Goggins, okay? It's pretty hard to do, dude. Someone's uh, a, a company sending me a cold plunge. Really? They claim to be. And I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll give you shout outs because it's like a five, six grand yeah, ton. Yeah, they're expensive. And, and they're just going to send it to me just so I can talk about it on social media. So I'm like, cool, I'll do it. But now that I've agreed to do it, I'm thinking, shit, because I always have to do it if I agreed to do it. So it's making me rethink, like, holy shit, dude, getting in a cold tub every day take some freaking that takes some discipline right rogan there. does a good job of it can i ask you a few questions before we end i know you gotta get going yeah. can i interview you for a minute let's go so you've got an amazing facility here i mean the camera systems everything you got um you've you've stayed consistent i see i swear you pop up every fifth time on tiktok for me good. i don't know maybe it's because i'm here maybe it's geo fencing me but what do you think the key was? You got Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, Facebook. Where and obviously we know the same gal that's uh, helping me, um, Mandy. But um, what would you say was is the most important few things that you've learned and some of the mistakes you've made when it comes to what becoming an influencer and really owning the, certain channels? I, I I haven't went bigger, faster, and sooner. That's the mistake I've made. Like, like I always played back in the cut. Like, dude, I'm cool. I don't care. I don't care. I'll let these guys get the credit and these guys get the fame. And I'm just cool. I'm too cool. So I just laid back and didn't do anything for a long time. And then I watched several of them make considerable amount of revenue directly from their personal brands. Meaning because of that, they're making millions of dollars. And I thought, well, dude, I, you know, I got something to say. I could do that. So I just started doing it. So I would say the mistake would be not doing it bigger, faster, and sooner. More of it. But, but you know, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, the, the, the key is not, you know, the key is to be the content. See, a lot of people are trying to figure out what to say and what to do so they sound cool, look cool, you know, sound intelligent, sound smart. When people can see through that, people should be the content, meaning like you, the recording of this is your content. Why? Because you're just being you. You're just saying what you say, but you're saying good shit. Now, on podcasts, some people are expecting you to have, you know, canned answers. Like a lot of times when I go on podcasts, they're like, you know, you want me to send you the, the questions? And I go, no, you don't need to. They're like, you don't want the questions in advance so you can prepare? Prepare what? Yeah. Yeah, what am I preparing? You're, you're your own brand. But what am I preparing? Yeah. Like, dude, ask me the I know question. My shit. Ask they're, me they're, the question and I'll give you the answer. And if it's I don't know, I'm going to say I don't know. Yeah. I don't have to go, hmm, let me get prepared for this question. It's not a, it's not a test. I never do the questions either. Uh, like I've never once said, let me 
prepare for the answers that I want to give because if it's outstaged, there's uh, there's a guy named Evan Carmichael. Yep, know who he is. And he just said, y- y-, and I'm like, I talk like this. This is how I talk. Uh, it- it's interesting because I, you're very conversational. You're like, hey man, hey, I can't even do it. You're like a southern type, but uh, hey, Ben Shapiro said I'm going to put four point. He, he said uh, we're just going to pay to play. He put four point four million dollars in. Ben, you know Ben Shapiro. He's going to do two hundred million this year on what? On his online Facebook, his back of the house. I forget what. Oh, it's you called. mean you mean you mean he's going to put four point four into his brand. He put four point four into his brand and yeah. his company yeah. on just Facebook paid ads. Well, dude, so I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking about throwing millions and millions of dollars into paid ads. Well, dude, you have the ability to do so. Like yeah. you're a character. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So so I think I think that would be a wise move on your part. Not to mention, dude, I mean like even even look at some of the ones where you wouldn't necessarily think you'd want to be them, but they're very successful financially because of their train train wreck of a life that was put on TV. Yep. You know, so I mean like attention wins. So if you can get people to follow you because you consistently put out good shit, that's a good thing. The question is, is how do you put out so much content to to uh achieve that well it's hard when you have when you're trying to create it and think it up all the time it's easy when you just go around being you and you just happen to be cool or funny or smart or great at you know real estate or whatever it is you are you know you're being you so you walk around with a guy Right. People are like, oh, look at this idiot with a camera guy. I, sometimes I'll go in and people are like, who the fuck's this guy? And then some people are like, oh, my God, he must be famous because he has a camera guy. <laughs> who the fuck's this guy? Yeah, it's like, you know, they, they feel they, they they feel that I should be embarrassed because I have a camera dude. Well, yeah, you know, like, well, like I don't you don't see me on social media at the gym much. Right. But one time I had to get some gym footage, you know, because we were making this little sizzle video. Oh, man. So I'm like, I'm like, come into the gym. So this dude's filming me at the gym, boom, 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 and he leaves. We're only in there for like 45 minutes. And then we leave, and then for like the next two weeks, all these fuckers started making fun of me. But, you know, they're buddies of mine. They're busting my balls and shit. You know, and I'm like, dude, you know, open open up your app and show me your bank account. (laughs) Yeah. I'm like, you're you're making fun of a motherfucker making millions of dollars instead of asking him what the fuck he's doing and emulating what he's doing. It's crazy to me. John Ruland, I went out to, uh, he lives in, uh, you know John? Yeah. Mythology. So, well, I, I'm good buddies with him and I went and seen him recently in St. Louis, but he was in Ohio at one of the companies he's working on and uh, we're at dinner and he brought his camera guy. And he's like, I hope this doesn't bother you. I'm like, no, but I'm like, I don't think I'm bringing my guys as much as I should be. Well, again, that's where you're being you. Right. Oh, no. It's every place that I'm being me, even the orientation is what I'm talking. Here's my rule. No yeah. bedroom, no bathroom. Why? <laughs> well, because, well, dude, I'm, my goal is not to be a porn star. Right. And if I let him in the bedroom, in the bathroom, I'd be a porn star. <laughs> so at the end of the day, it's like, look, you don't need to go into those places. But other than that, film me. Like when I, if I go talk to an employee, film me. If I'm terminating an employee, film it. Like, what's your screening ju- process? Just before you got here, I was in that meeting, sales meeting room, and, yeah. the, and the dude, one of the new guys, he's new, and so I'm talking to him a little bit. And I said, I said, uh, so let me ask you a question. If there was an ad that said how to give better blowjobs, would you click on it? And he said, yeah, absolutely. And I said, you would. <laughs> And then he's like, no, no. Then he's like, edit that, edit that. And you didn't even ask him what I said. I said, first of all, dude, did you sign the employee handbook when you started here? Because my employee handbook says point blank, dude, you're an actor. You're not an employee. This is a, this is a production, right? Yeah. So I can, I can typecast now. Yeah. And, you know, like, like they have auditions. They don't have uh, 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 trials, yeah. trials. You know, yeah. no, we're going to audition. Like, you know, hey, I'm going to give you the part for 90 days. See how you do. But anyway, at, at the end of the day, I told him, you know, you signed a waiver in that handbook that says I can use any likeness of your image on facility. He's begging me to delete it. It was funny. Oh, He's like, God. dude, you can't put that on social media. I'm like, dude, no one's going to think you're gay. <laughs> I said, dude, no one's going to think you're gay. At the worst case scenario, you know, people are going to think that you got caught up in a, in a, you know, you screwed up. It's funny. He's like, no, don't put it out there. See, and where am I going with all this? He's worried about what people think. 
If I put that out there and it went viral, he would benefit even though he was the butt of the joke from the familiarity. People would say, hey, you're that guy on that video. Hey, what do you do? And next thing you know, relationships are coming and, and revenue's coming. And I'm telling you right now, a personal brand, if you if you uh, can, I would highly recommend building one. And I know you can. I know you can. And, and again, a lot of people say, well, who you use? Because I turn Mandy on to a lot of people. Right. People, people are like, they look at me and they're like, oh, shit, dude, that's Mandy doing that. It isn't Mandy doing that. It's no, me. It's, it's, you it's, take, you gotta, you're the dude, production. Me, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what dude, it is. Mandy's great, but it's you're right. It's me doing it and Mandy doing it. Why? Because Mandy takes the footage and can identify what was funny and what was classic. They also are smart enough to realize that might get him suppressed, that might not. So, so Mandy... And me is what makes it happen. So Mandy and you might not be able to do it. Why? Well, because dude, it's chemistry or, or you aren't giving her the shit to work. No, I'm with. having to double it down. Like, look, Giuseppe's here. I got, yeah, Xavier, but if you keep, I mean, if you keep doing this and you keep being you, I guarantee you do pretty soon. You're going to probably be bigger than me. Like Alex Hormozzi. Yeah. Like I discovered Alex Hormozzi before Alex Hormozzi was Alex Hormozzi and he's getting big now too. He is. He's, he's outdone me on YouTube already. Mastermind. Yeah. But, but a hundred million uh, offers. That's yeah. Cool. But, and he's a smart dude. He is smart dude. He so, is. so at the end of the day though, my point is, is, is like, what is he doing on social media to blow up like that? Well, you do what he does. You, it'll blow up for you. Not unless you're smart. Like he is not unless you have frameworks like he does. Not unless you have muscles like he does. Yeah. Now again, you don't have to have muscles, but you have to have something. I'm telling people the, the nose, truth. The nose thing. But I'm telling people the truth. Like everyone can't be one. No, the fact is, look, you have to have an it factor of some kind. Your information has to be some. So that's why I'm telling people to be authentic because that's the rarest thing out there on social media is authenticity. People want to see you arguing with your fucking wife. If you're arguing with your wife, people want to see how you fixed a problem or how you apologize. People like that crying and, and shit. Like that, that vulnerability. That's the name. Vulnerability. Well, listen, uh, you know, this is this is exactly what they, they crave, right? To open presents and stuff like that. I um, I look at Gary Vee, Grant Cardone, you. Uh, who's that other big guy that wrote well, just one more? He's, um, he's like, one more day. You know, he's a little older. He's been speaking at a lot of the events you've been speaking at. One more time. Ed Milet. Ed Milet. One more. Power one, of one more. Power of one more. Uh, you, you got... Lots and lots of influencers out there. And I was talking to Mandy a couple of days ago. And she's like, listen, she's like, if you could just get your people to record, she's like, she's like, I, you, you're not Alex or Mosey and you're not Bradley, but you're much more closer to Bradley than Alex. And she's like, you'll, all she does is send me the questions and I make all the videos at once. And I don't think about it. I don't prepare. Yeah, but, that, but that's one avenue. Well, that's what. And by the way, those are called intentionals, and I invented those f for her. In other words, we div I, I said that's what we need to do for me, and now that's what she does for a lot of people. Big, big but, questions. But yeah. that's one. Don't let that be the only thing you do. No, we're gonna do a lot. See, more. like, like, like he's following me around. These ain't what she, what those are. Those right. are, you do those as well. And and now, and now we're starting to like review other people's videos. Yeah. You know, it's trending like that. So, right. so like, listen to what Mandy oh, yeah. tells That's you. That's what Gary V pointing up. Yeah, yeah. But do, do whatever Mandy tells you to do, but also, well, also everything else. And then give her that footage as well, because if she gets this footage, she'll do, she'll do kick-ass shit with it as well. Oh, yeah. Meaning she can only do so much based on what you give her. And that's where I was going where it ain't Mandy. Cause I know people that, you know, saw me and hired Mandy and pretty soon they're like, you know, firing Mandy. Why? Well, cause it wasn't working. Well, it wasn't working because Mandy can't take somebody that's not saying anything and not doing anything and make them famous. No, she, she can take someone that says stuff and does stuff and fucking help them frame it. To where it goes, it goes viral and it's real. It's not fake. So again, like I highly recommend Mandy every time. Like if you didn't know Mandy right now and you were saying, dude, I want to do it. Well, you got money cause you know, she ain't cheap. Um, but you got money and I'm listening to you. You got exactly what it takes. You can be me if you want to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. No, you can, it's great, man. Listen, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, if you got, dude, any I'll, listen, I'm going to have some events coming up. Okay. I'll have you come speak. You speak. Like yeah, you, people yeah. are giving me 50 G's to speak for an hour left yeah, and right. I think last year I did 20 or 30 of them. 
So and, that's the deal I've been funny, speaking, but I haven't been making it very lucrative. I'm just getting myself out there. I well, spoke, that's that's, I'm speaking at when the storm, you know, 10,000 people well, for listen, an hour. I know usually you're paying to do that, though. Well, yeah, with if, Anthony. <laughs> if, he, if, he let, if he lets you do it free, you know, like he ain't charging you, that's no. even better. But... It, when he pays you, that's 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 the cool. Like Floyd Mayweather spoke there too, but I guarantee you he didn't pay to speak there. He got paid to speak. Oh, there. he got paid to speak there. Yeah. yeah. So so, dude, build your brand, build your brand, build your brand. Pretty soon, you'll start getting paid to speak there. Yeah. Like, dude, I got people right now paying me, booking me left and right to speak because I'm Brad Lee. Yeah. And I'm like, and I think to myself because I'm not a pretentious dude. I don't walk around acting like I'm somebody. Matter of fact, it's the opposite. Uh, people got to convince me. Sometimes I'm like, dude, I'm not, I'm not that really, I'm not that famous. They're like, dude, yeah, you are. I'm like, bro, in, in reality, I'm not. Like, that's stupid to even say, because in the truth, I'm not. But I am recognized because of this, which is, by the way, minor. I go through the airport, dude, and I get recognized four or five times. There's tens of thousands of people in the airport. Okay, now Brad Pitt walks in the airport. How many times do you think he'll be recognized? Ever. Hundreds. That's fucking famous. Okay, I'm not famous, but I am I am recognizable for people on social media. So when you think about it, if the if the social media is the new television, how many channels are you on? And, yep. what, and what is your program? Because if your program is, you know, let me show you how to fish and you're, and you're a really good fisherman and you're just teaching authentic fishing secrets. Next thing you know, you're fucking, you go viral with all the fishermen. And all of a sudden now you've got a, a fishing line that's making you millions of dollars. And people are like, how did it start? Well, I started with social media. What'd you do? Well, I just started sharing people how I tie my flies and, and where my favorite fishing spots were. Like, it's just people being people. That's what people want. They want real. So, so my so, advice to you, Tommy, yeah. is to just fucking, you know, have someone follow you around, talk with who you talk with. You stop by and have lunch with an old buddy. That's some of the best material ever. You, you call an ex-girlfriend. That's the best material ever. You fucking call your new girlfriend. That's the best material ever. You go out and argue with a customer, sell a customer, close a customer, solve heat at your, at your company. There's a major issue. Camera on. Follow me. Fucking walk in and handle that shit for real. Yeah. You know, sometimes you might go turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. But wait till you, wait till you feel like, hey, turn that shit off. I, I, I'm about to say shit I don't want on recording because you don't. But I say film everything. Why? Because, dude, I, I'm me. And I guarantee you, dude, I don't regret saying what I say. I'm not fucking a racist. I'm not a misogynist. You know, I, I believe men are stronger than women in yeah. general. Do you? Yeah, 100%. that doesn't make me a misogynist, and I, I don't care if it's have babies, and I don't care if it's if it's being recorded. Why? Because if someone hates me because I believe like that, you then, have testosterone. Well, at the end of the day, it's like if someone doesn't like me, I'm okay with that. Why? Well, because I like myself, and usually I, that's what I try to tell people. Like you can do whatever you want to do on social media. It doesn't it's not going to make. There's you all go. these haters out there. I'm posting on my shit. There's all these fake accounts. I got ten fake profiles now. Yeah, but like that's the point. Like, dude, you can't worry about what other people think. I don't care. Think. Like, you, you know, if uh, you you're going to get haters. a bunch of followers from this, the Bomb Squad. Yeah. Bomb Squad, go follow this dude. Official Tommy Mello, just like M E L L O. Dude, you know your shit. I'm going to have you back. That sounds good, bro. And then, uh, and then, uh, even offline, dude. Let's 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 hang out, chat a little bit. Yeah, See. I got your number, man. We'll definitely do that. Folks, if you guys want to follow this dude, work for A1.com. That's where you can apply. Okay. At official Tommy Mello on Instagram. His podcast is Home Service Expert. It's been around 17 years, sounds like. Lots of downloads. Books, Elevate. Book, and the one before that. Book, period, Elevate and Win. So, book, book period, Elevate and Win dot com. Yeah, but you don't say period. It's book dot. Book dot, Elevate and Win dot com. And uh, this isn't everybody book. This book is just all about having more fun and joy Mondays and having everybody win around you. If you lift people up, you just lifted me up. You gave me a lot of ideas. You told me, hey, man, I'm going to hang out with you outside of this. When you do that all the time and you give back to people and you literally look out for their best interest, I ask, I have a dream manager that works for me. Her job is to help every single person peel back the onion and figure out your dreams. And I say, do you want to take your dad on a fishing trip? Do you want to take your grandma to... Spain, do you want to go to Disney World with your kids for two weeks and rent out an RV? And that way, when I'm talking to you, Brad, I say, Brad, listen, bro, 
you wanted me to hold you accountable because, man, I know what your dreams are. I'm looking at them right here. We're going to do this shit together. And those hard conversations become easier. And Elevate is all about letting everybody win. My vendors win. I sat down with my vendors. I said, I'm not, even, I'm not here to ask you anything. I said, I want to know the 10 things you guys needed the most from us. Because I show up. And I said, I'm going to make, uh, I'll give you guys a little secret. I'm going to blow up Chicago. I'm going to make that a badass market because they need my help there. So I asked them what I could do for them. And if you start every conversation on, you know, I, I moved my flight yesterday because a buddy said, I got 70 contractors here. Can you come by? And it was a week ago. And I said, uh, dude, I'm flying to Vegas. He said, all right, man, uh, sorry, I missed you. And I said, you know what? Hold on. I'm moving my flight. And so he got up there. They bought a book for everybody. And he said, look, uh, he goes, Tommy Mello didn't ask for anything. He moved his flight. He doesn't want to get paid for this. Because it's in my town. It's right down the street. I just showed up. And, uh, you know, I think, how long did it take you when you were booking your, when, uh, I've always said uh, $50,000 is great. And everybody, $50,000 is a lot of money. I came from, my mom worked three jobs to save our house. I was making $4.05 in my first job. But when you started speaking, at what point in your climb up the ladder did it start going from, I don't know, 10, 20, 50? How, how did that number get? It started at 25. Okay. Because I would do it for free. I did it for free for Grant a couple times when we started 10X. Uh, growth conference and then I and then I was speaking and because I was on 10x other people wanted me to speak at their stage and once you're on one or two good ones you know everybody's like oh let me have him just like a podcast like because you're on my podcast dude there'll be several people reaching out to you to be on theirs um but you just get started but I mean at some point I didn't want to do them anymore like I'm not a speaker Okay, I don't. I don't want to come speak. They want me to speak, and and I, when I say, well, "What do you want me to speak about?" They say anything, and that that makes me feel good because it's basically saying, "You so you just you just want me to show up and talk about anything." And they're like, and, and I'm and I'm like, dude, that's kind of flattering to me. Why? Well, because most people say, "Dude, I'll pay you, but you need to come talk about sales." I want you to talk about how you did this. They don't. They just say say whatever you want because they think I'm going to show up and say something good. So good. Well, but, I mean, but the reason why though is because I, I'm I'm assuming they think I'm going to sell tickets. Yeah, because, that's exactly right. You're yeah, an influencer. Yeah. So people want to see Brad Lee. So so they see him here and that celebritizes you. And then hey, let me see him on stage. So so I'm a I'm a draw. So they'll sell tickets. But dude, I'm telling you, I put on my own events and sometimes people don't buy tickets. I got an event coming up. I'm going to start doing other events. I'm going to have you at one of those events because again dude to me your story needs to be heard more you're knowledgeable and the shit that you got you know naturally spilling out of you is in my opinion good shit or correct i would usually say it's like that's correct that's correct you would have got more bombs but i wasn't paying attention to the bombs which is by the way a better sign some people always says i was trying to get so many oh, bombs well guess what bombs. Yeah, but, guess, but guess what you got a few you didn't even know see they sound like this oh but nice. my point is people come on they're like dude I want to I wanted to get you know some bombs and I'm like dude when you don't get any that usually means it's even better why because I forgot we, oh, were yeah. we were talking but anyway listen we'll have this guy back I know you guys are gonna want to have him back go follow him in the meantime official Tommy Mello he drops content like it's going out of style if you guys need a job you want to make some money call me hit me in the DM <laughs> I got multiple jobs for you and now I'm gonna figure out a deal with with Tommy to where shit I'll just start driving a lot of people to come to me to you why well because I'm just trying to show people how to make a couple hundred grand a year and if you can do that in the garage door business well, or the home service business which I know you can that wasn't a question then why not um, but anyway hit him up go buy his book elevate or that's coming out or it's out? That's coming out uh, May, uh, March 15th and then um, Home Service Millionaire. Home Service Millionaire is And already. the third book, well, I've got a bunch of books coming up, but probably the 20th book will be uh, Home Service Billionaire. There you go. <laughs> Folks, as always, until next time, keep it real. People that are training with me are changing their lives forever. And guess what? If you're a skeptic, you're a skeptic on you. You're a skeptic on you. I don't know why you have these self doubts about yourself. Like you said, most people can't make it because they don't believe that's an issue with you because the stuff that we teach is the truth.